none of us is who we are all by ourselves. Ever since the day of our birth, we have received nourishment and nurture, protection and care, friendship and encouragement, love and support in a variety of ways through an assortment of special caring people in our lives. Whether it is called parenting or marriage, family, friendships, mentoring, coaching, companionship, there has always been some part of community relationship that has helped us come to the place we are and to the people that we are. The church is one of those communities, not just one of many that we may pick and choose from, but the church is the one community that helps us find our faith in Jesus Christ helps develop and incorporate that relation of Jesus into every aspect of our life. The church is our community that helps us to walk and to live in faith through life's joys and sorrow, crises and fears, life's adventures and fulfillments. The church is our community that helps each of us and all of us to find and fulfill our God-given and directed life purpose in Jesus. We are blessed to have God give us this gift of this community of which we call his church. To believe in Jesus, to belong to one another, to become his people that we may love God and each other and serve our world. It is this community, Christ Church, that is what we want to talk about today. Janet and I have been blessed to be part of five churches in our ministry these last 55 years. These five church communities have not just been places that we have served to receive a salary, but they have been precious communities where we have raised our family, established lifelong friends, have lived life encountering and enjoying and experiencing, sharing, ministering, and serving to others, as well as being the recipients of much ministry to ourselves. I'd like to introduce them to you as a special appreciation to these communities' blessings on our life. First, there was Concord Church of Christ in Concord, Minnesota. Our first ministry, I was still in college and finishing my, just completing my last year when they called and wanted uh, part-time or wanted to fill in minister until they could get a minister. Well, guess what? I was their minister through all those six years and it was there that we had our two girls, Joy and Jill. And from there, there we went to Indian Run Christian Church in East Canton, Ohio. And this is the church we served for six years. And there's a story about this church, I didn't read it in writing, but a story that in 1830, Alexander Campbell came through the region and he preached at this church. And since then, that church has been Indian Run Christian Church. Also, a very other significant event happened there. That's where Jeremy was born. Jeremy, with much delight and excitement, enthusiasm, and all kinds of other traits, and uh, which you know and experience today. From there, we went to, we went to Camby, Minnesota, and we served for 20 years at Antelope Hills Christian Church. It was there that we raised our family. It was there that we experienced so many rich blessings in ministry and caring of, of, of being there. And from there, we went to Clear Lake Church of Christ in Clear Lake, Iowa, and it was here as we ministered there that Janet was able to have her bed and breakfast, which was a lifelong dream of her, and where I was able to do chaplain training and started ministry with chaplaincy and um, both hospice and hospital. And from there we came to Sheldon Church of Christ, which is somewhere in Wisconsin and which you can see around you right here. For going on 10 years now, Sheldon Church of Christ is the community we are honored to participate in. Today as we have worshiped and now as we share of what God has to say on what this community is, 
and how it is to impact and affect our lives and our world. Jeremy began a series of sermons last week entitled, Abide Simplified. If you've been part of our church community for the last dozen years or so, you should be very familiar with this phrase, taken from Jesus' words in John, the 15th chapter, and applied to our life and ministry here. As we abide in Christ, we acquire what we need to advance God's kingdom in our life and in our world. He focused on three things that need to happen as we uh, try to implement that and, and try to discipline ourselves in that and direct ourselves in that direction that are important with our abiding in Christ so that we can acquire and we can advance Christ's kingdom. Community, the church, and active participation and involvement in God's community, the church, an active reading of God's word and applying it to our life, and prayer, to pray and trusting God to guide and help and lead us. So as we talk about community today, how do we recognize our need for community, to share and live in community, and impact and influence others through our community? Our scripture today helps guide us through these questions and lead us to some helpful responses and actions that we can do. From Philippians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 4, we read, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, by having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. We need to recognize and acknowledge who we are and what we have been given. Look at verse 1 again. And verse 1, if you note, has ifs in it. There's four statements with ifs, and the ifs aren't uh, a what if type thing or uh, it, it, if they're going to happen or not well maybe they will maybe they won't it's not that kind of if it's an if that's exploratory saying examine your life look at your life and answer these questions is there you could say say the same thing by saying is there any encouragement between united with christ and is there but Paul says, if, because the response then, if we answer yes, there is, well then there's a directive that's given in the second verse. It's an if then. And so we look at the ifs that are given to us in scripture. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, the New Living Translation says, if you have any encouragement, by belonging to Christ. Think about what it means to be united to Christ and belonging to Christ. What does Jesus give and what does Jesus bring to us? In Christ is our forgiveness of sins. In Christ is our starting over, our sins forgiven, uh, 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 our, our lives cleansed and fresh and new. In Christ is our peace and comfort and our, our hope. In Christ is all we need, the encouragement we need to live our life, to make our life to make a difference. So is there, is there benefit from having a new life in Christ? What do we experience and enjoy from our new life in Christ? The second, if, if you have any comfort from his love, his kindness, his mercy and grace. So, uh, when we were going through the fruits of the Spirit, and I, when we were going through the fruit of the Spirit, and I was asked to preach on kindness. Kindness is simply defined as, uh, in the Old Testament word of the Hesed love, it encompasses both mercy and grace. That mercy, uh, have we comfort from God's 
merciful love, his graceful love on our life. Not giving is what we do deserve, but do giving is giving us what we don't deserve. Do we have any comfort from that? The experience of God's grace and his mercy in our life in, in so many ways. If you have any fellowship with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that's given to us to assure us that we belong to Christ, to assure us of God's guidance, to empower us, to help us, to help us to go and bear fruit, to live fruitful lives. Do we have fellowship with the Spirit? And do we have, if you have any tenderness and compassion? Defined, uh, uh, strictly translated, affections and sympathy. Basically, the motivation for love, the heart for love, but the action of love as well. That, that we have a kindness in us, we have that affection within our heart, as well as a compassion that wants to be expressed and to come out of our life. A change of heart that's coming to us because of our new birth in Christ. As we are a new person in Christ, experience the benefits of his merciful grace and love and God meeting all our needs. Paul says, do we have these things? And if we do, we need to recognize and acknowledge who we are what we have been given. And verse 2 is the then part of the verse. That the, uh, the then that asks us to recognize and act on the responses and responsibilities we have then in community. And verse 2 says, Then make my joy complete. Um, uh, make my joy complete as we try to connect to one another. It literally says, let me back up a minute. Let's talk about how we need to be connected and staying connected to one another. We all know the downside of social distancing over this last year. While we acknowledge the need for keeping ourselves and others safe from the COVID virus, and we understand the place that physical distancing has in doing that, and so we attempt to practice it accordingly, but social distancing has risk and harm. When we've seen the risk and harm of disconnection and isolation and aloneness and what it is called. A complete disconnect, a complete disconnect from each other is not helpful. It leads to more harm than good. I'm not suggesting we cease practicing physical distancing, but in the practicing of physical distancing to protect ourselves and others, we need to find ways to stay connected socially. And thank God for technology. There's a lot of stuff we can do with technology, of calling or writing or being in touch with others and finding ways to know that we or others aren't isolated and left all alone. This verse reminds us of the importance of staying socially connected, of, of, of being connected to one another, to a, a call to stay connected with one purpose in mind, to love Jesus, to love each other, and to be faithful to the purpose that God calls us to. It says we need to be like-minded. Being of one mind is a translation. That this is not a call for unanimous thinking. That we all think exactly like on everything. We all know the impossibility of that happening. I doubt if there is any marriage, any family, any relationship anywhere, any time, any place in all of history that this has been, there's been total unanimity, being unanimous, being exactly thinking alike. Being like-minded of one mind, literally translated by one commentator, is contemplating the same thing. The suggestion is when we read verse 2, is not take them as individual standalone clauses, but take them all together describing the action that should take place. And so it should read, we read, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, 
being one in spirit and purpose. The New Living Translation translates, then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and one purpose. What, what I think is a contemporary translation of that is, as a church, we need to always keep the main thing, the main thing. With one mind, with one heart, with one love, with one action, we're working together to keep the main thing, the main thing, which is to, as Jesus says, love God with our, with our heart, our soul, and mind, our strength, and also to love our neighbor as ourselves. That we need as a church to help each other to live our lives loving God, loving others, and serving our world. Paul gives several directives in doing that. We've already spent time on one that we need to let go of our self-focus and keep holding on and with our connection to one another. We also need to let go of self-serving and hold on to humbly serving others. The uh, third and fourth verses of Philippians 2 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not out not only for your own interests, but also to the interest of others. The truth is we must never become so independent that we lose and let go of our inner dependence. We do, we really do need each other. Sometimes we are the strong to help lift those and encourage those and support those that may be struggling and, and having a conflict or having difficulty in whatever area, but sometimes we are the ones that are struggling and we need the help and the strength, the support and the strength. And so we need to keep looking, not just for our own interest, but keep looking out for the interest of others and trying to be supportive and helpful and caring. The 10th chapter of Hebrews, verses 22 through 25, carries this out. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold on swervingly to the hope that we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. We need to also let go of self and hold on to Jesus, patterning our life after him. The last part of that Philippians uh, section, verses 5 through 11, tells us that we ought to have the attitude and the pattern of Jesus before us. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven on earth and under the church, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let's keep Jesus before us as our pattern of life. He didn't seek his own interest, but sought ours. And the Bible says that we need to not simply seek our own interest, but seek after the interest of others. 
My son-in-law, Bob, grew up in central Pennsylvania, and he was going to college, but still lived at home. But he not only went to his classes at college, there was a lot of college activity and endeavors that he was involved in that his father and parents didn't particularly approve of. He chose to live at home, and he chose that he wasn't going to go to church anymore. And his father said, as long as you live under my roof and stay, you will be going to church. Bob says, I don't need the church anymore. And his dad had him sit by the fire and uh, had them sit. A fire was burning. He took the tongs from the fireplace, lifted them, and went over and took a hot coal that was right in the center, burning brightly with the flame, and, and took that out uh, and, and took it out and put it on the edge, let go of it, put it away from the fire on the edge of the ledge there, and just sat down on both of them, saw that hot coal, a flaming red, turned to white and just until it lost all its color and no semblance of heat there at all anymore. Then his dad just picked it back up, put it back to the fire, and almost immediately what looked like a dead ember turned in, uh, before long, turned bright red again with the flame. And his dad said to Bob, Bob, that's why you need the church. You need the church to keep your fire of faith burning. And that's why we need the church, to keep the fire of our faith burning. Because all of us at times need the warmth of love and encouragement, the spark of stepping out, uh, in, out into faith and into ministry, the glow of hope and promise that God gives, the fire of passing and serving one another and those in our world. We do need the church. We need to be an active part of the community that God gives to us, not only for our own faith to grow, but for us to go and others to grow and uh, uh, go as well. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that you gave Jesus to come to earth to die for our sins. Through your mercy and grace, you give us salvation, forgiveness, hope, and promise of eternal life. You are with us every day through the presence of your spirit in our life and Jesus' uh, pattern before us. Help us, Father, to live in a way and be a part of the church you call us to be a part of, to not only grow ourselves, but also to help others grow and be encouraged and to serve the world you call us to be a witness to. So help us and guide us through your grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.